welcome to another section here on factoring. Um, here in uh, chapter P, lesson or section P.4. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at factoring by grouping. And this is really a, a totally new topic uh, for students coming from Algebra 1 and Geometry. So um, just pay close attention on how we can actually go about factoring some of these more complicated or longer um, polynomials. Okay. Really all of the ones we're going to look at today uh, with this new topic are going to relate to four, uh, four term polynomials. Okay. Um, so we don't really have a particular name for that or not one that we use regularly. So we're just going to going to call them again four term polynomials. That's okay. Um, so let's take a look at this first one. Um, this is a cubic, okay, based on the degree that we see here. This is the third power. We got second, first, and we have a degree zero. Okay, so this is already put in standard form for us. And then all that I want you guys to ask yourself is have you ever factored cubics before? And I'm guessing most of you are saying, well, not until last lesson, right? Um, cubics, last lesson, we took a look at the sum and difference of cubes, which is really just a cubed plus b cubed, or a cubed minus b cubed, right? Those were kind of our, our new topics, our new stuff. Um, that's what we were paying attention to. And this is really not like that at all, okay? This is a lot more complicated, and with these big terms here in the middle, there's not necessarily some nice way to, to, to work this around, okay? Now, I realize some of you may have said, okay, 8r cubed, well, that's 2r times 2r times 2r, Negative 8 is going to be minus 2 times itself a total of 3 times, right? Negative 2 times itself 3 times. But, I mean, these terms in the middle, there's no nice, easy way to get that. Um, and I'll tell you right now, it has nothing to do with sum or difference of cubes, okay? So instead, what I want to focus on here, here on number 1, is what some of these terms have in common, okay? <clears throat> well, here at, the, here at the front, if I were to just kind of focus only on these two terms, I could say that they have quite a bit in common, right? In fact, they, they have a, a relatively large GCF, okay? 8r to the to the the, uh, the third power, 64r to the second. Well, 8 goes into both of those, right? So I'm going to start off by factoring that out, as well as as many r's as I possibly can. So I'm going to factor out two of them, right? 8r squared. And I would be left with an r here in my first term. And here at the end, I'm going to have a negative 8 remaining, okay? Well, that looks pretty similar, doesn't it, to what we already had here at the end. We had a positive r minus 8, and if you think about it, we have exactly one of those, right? So I've got 8r squared of these r minus 8s, and I have one of these r minus 8s here at the end. Of course, we could just easily factor that one out. So how many 8 r, or I'm sorry, r minus 8s do I have in all? It would be 8r squared plus 1 of those r minus 8s, okay? And there, we now have dealt with our entire factor, factoring, okay? Now this is a quadratic, and uh, obviously if you really cared to, you could use the quadratic formula. If this were an equation, we could go about solving this. We don't need to, okay? We factored what we can, and I don't see a nice, easy way to go about factoring that first piece. I, I doubt you do either, okay? Um, so let's take a look at number nine. We're going to kind of jump through some of these. And the ones that I'm skipping, um, I really just want you guys doing, doing odds, working on those together a little bit, seeing, seeing about some practice you can get there. It um, doesn't have to be all of them, but at least until you feel pretty comfortable with the, the concept, okay? So let's, let's try this again. Okay, so 96 and 84. Um, so, I mean, this is our n cubed, n squared, n, and then degree zero, okay? I may want to try to group these and then these here at the end, right? Well, 96 and 84 have 12 in common, right? Um, this would be 12 times 8. And this one's going to be 12 times 7. So if I factored 12 out, I would have an 8 of these and a 7 of those. All right? Well, 112 and 98, what do they have in common? Um, what, a 2? I mean, if I factor a 2 out here, I get 2 times 56. 2 out there, I get 2 times 49. Well, 56 and 49, maybe. Okay, so uh, 56, we're going to have what? 7 times 8. 49, we're going to have 7 times 7. So we, we could have gone further, couldn't we? We actually could have factored out not just a 2, but also a 7 or a 14 total. So this is what I'm going to try to factor out of those two. And then these two up front, let's go ahead and try to factor out that 12 like we talked about, okay? And see what we're left with, okay? So if I factor out 12 here, how many of these would I be left with? Well, again, that was 12 times 8 is going to be 96. And 12 times, that'd be a negative 7, right, of those. And then how many n's do they have in common? Well, that would be two of them. So 12 n squared is going to be one n remaining here, and then I'll be left with just a negative 7 when I factor out that 12 n squared. Okay? What about the next couple of terms? Well, 
12 in, if I factor out 14, let's see here, 14 would go into 70 exactly five times, and then I'm going to have 42 left, which would go into three more. Well, look at that. So I'm going to have 14 times an 8 in, and 14 goes into 98, well, you guessed it, uh, seven times, okay, or negative seven in this case, okay? Now that I've factored that out, 12 in squared and 14, I've got my 8 in minus 7, my other 8 in minus 7, and now I can say how many of those do I have total? I have exactly 12 in squared plus 14 of those 8 in minus 7s, okay? Now if it's not really clicking as to why I can simply group the coefficients on these binomials, think about it like this. This is the factor, this whole binomial, this is the factor that the first term and the second term have in common, okay? So if I were to factor an 8n minus 7 out of both of those, what would I be left with? Well, 12n squared and 14, okay? So it's kind of a different way of thinking about what you're actually factoring. I mean, it's, it's a bigger type of factor, right? Like a polynomial factor. So let's go ahead and try a couple more here on the back, okay? 21 here. This is a little bit tricky. This is where we're all of a sudden we're looking at these different variables as well. So we've got 56xy minus 35x plus 16ry minus 10r. Well, once again, let, let's see if, if we can find some stuff they have in common. 56 and 35, I can factor out 7 of both of those, right? So if I start off by factoring out 7, I would be left with 8 of those, and I would be left with negative 5 of these. What else do they have? Well, an x, right? So 7x times the quantity 8y would be left minus 5. 7x times 8y is indeed 56xy. 7x minus times negative 5 is a negative 35x, right? Let's try the same thing back here and see if we can continue factoring these. They have an r in common, and in addition, they're both even. So I'm going to try to factor out a 2r and see what's left, okay? 16ry minus, uh, divided by 2r is going to leave us with an 8y. And negative 10r divided by 2y is going to leave us with a negative 5. Well, once again, what do we see? These both have an 8y minus 5 in common, right? So if I think about this as like one big term in the front and one big term in the back, I can now factor that out of both, this 8y minus 5, and I would be left with 7x plus 2r of those, okay? 7x plus 2r of these 8y minus 5s, okay? So you factor it. Okay? And I realize some of you may look at that and go, it looks nothing like what we started off with. But all you've got to do is go about distributing each individual term to the others and then combining like terms. I guarantee you it's exactly what you're going to get. Okay, In this case, there actually are no like terms. 2 by 2 is 4, and we started off with 4 terms anyways. But, all right, take a look at 25 then. Okay, hmm. Well, this is where things start to, to maybe seem a little bit more unusual. Okay. I've got xy's, I've got b squareds, I've got xb's, and by's. Hmm. Well, if you just look at variables, xy and b squared don't even have anything in common, whereas these would both have a b, right? So maybe what we need to do is we need to pair up the b squareds with one of these b's, okay, and either the other ones, either of the other ones, either the xb or the, the by, with the xy here, okay? So let's try this one first. Let's try to pair up this one and this one, and we'll try to pair up this one with this one, okay? Let's just try it. We'll see what happens, okay? So negative 12b squared, and we've got a negative 18by. Here at the end, we'll look at our positive 21xy and our positive 14xb, okay? Well, now I'm starting to see that, I mean, and honestly, I kind of lucked into this. I could have paired it up with either one of these, okay? Um, <clears throat> the, the b squared, I can factor a b out of both of these, and 12 and 18 both have a 6 in common, right? Or, I guess in this case, a negative 6, all right? Here at the end, um, well, I'd have, what, my x could factor out of both of them, and they have a 7 in common, Okay. So let's, let's try that. Let's try to factor these, these pieces out. I'm going to factor out a negative 6b and see what's left. So negative 12b squared divided by negative 6b is going to give me a 2b. And negative 18by divided by negative 6b is going to give me a positive 3y. Okay. Next up, 
I'm going to factor a 7x out. Okay, so positive 7x. And we would be left with a 3y. And over here, we're going to have a positive 2b. Now, some of you may look at that and go, wait, wait, wait. Didn't we make a mistake somewhere? I mean, these don't match up. Well, no, because as we know, we can simply rearrange the order. Why did I write the same one again? Uh, we can simply rearrange the order of terms, right? 5 plus 3, 3 plus 5. It doesn't matter how we choose to add these. So if I flip those, all of a sudden they look similar. And now I can factor that binomial out of reach. And I would be left with quantity negative 6b plus 7x and the quantity uh, let's, like I said, we'll flip this one, so we'll have a 2b plus 3y, okay? So there's our factored form. Now, I know this is a little bit odd. I mean, that's that's kind of the, why I'm showing it to you, but it's also very helpful, okay? And I'm not saying, like, every time you come across these, you know, these four-term polynomials, they're going to work this way, but like we've talked about in the past, every new skill that you guys can learn is one more tool in your toolbox that you guys can continue to reference as you try harder and newer problems, okay? So hopefully you're starting to see kind of how this works together. And uh, from here, I'm gonna have you guys work in groups uh, to practice this a little bit. Um, there's a group grade available. And then finally, if you guys still don't feel like, you know, you've gotten enough practice on your own, I've also posted some practice problems along with a key on Canvas that I'd like you guys to reference. So you guys have the tools at your disposal and I'd recommend using them with, you, with the time remaining, okay? Let me know if you have any questions and good luck.